I was super impressed, um, obviously, by Jep Chirchir, but Viola Cheptu, Gordon, 222.44 in her debut, only five seconds back of Jep Chirchir. She was running 1500s up until 2019. Because I remember her from Florida State. Do you remember her from Florida State? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she went on to make uh, the Kenyan Olympic team in the 1500 as well. Very solid runner, but I never saw her and was like, oh, for sure roads for sure marathon that's going to be it and then you go back and you look at her her recent history it's like what jumped out uh what jumps off the page here in terms of signs that she would have been this solid at the marathon and really there's just one she ran a good half two years ago 66 high but that was pretty much it that was pretty much it 2020 she runs she runs 6647 in Napoli. That's it. I mean, going into this year, she she ran on the track a couple times, some 5Ks, some 10Ks, then some uh some 10Ks on the road. The half that she did as a tune-up was 6913. And I was just I was just blown away that she was in there. Cool moment because Bernard Legat, brother, was calling the race. And you could tell he was trying not to freak out. I don't know. I don't know if he anticipated her being that good, uh, but it was, I mean, it was something to to behold there. And she's a star. She's already, I mean, first, first one to go that well for you, it just bodes well for the future for her. Yeah. I mean, it's a hell of a debut. 222.44. Uh, it sets you up well for the second half of your career. She's 32 years old. So she probably has a good five years left, right? Because mm-hmm. once you get to the opposite, I feel like 36, 37 is kind of like the end point for most marathoners. Obviously, mm-hmm. we have the ones who go into their 40s, but, you know, they're more the the outliers. But, yeah, I mean, it's a good starting point for her for going into this next Olympic cycle. And I'm sure she's probably thinking, hey, I turned 33 in, in, a, in March. You know, I'll be... She'll be 35, I guess, in 2024. That could be one last shot to make an Olympic team. Has she ever made the Olympics? Yeah, she did in 2016. Yeah, she, yeah so, in the 1500. In the 1500. She, so make the 2016 and the 2024 Olympics. So very In the 15, in the marathon? 15, yeah. That's, 15 to the marathon. Yeah. It's Kipchoge. Hey, well, her, <laughs> her, her, her brother had crazy longevity and pretty good range himself, too. The rest of this women's uh, top 10, so you had Johannes behind Seidel in fifth, and then Kellen Taylor of the U.S. in sixth, ahead of Annie Frisbee, who also made a debut, 226.18. She set her half marathon PB twice in this race, Gordon, because she came in with a 75 and change as a PB, and she ran faster than that on both halves. Then you had Laura Thweet in eighth for the U.S. Um, Frisbee's interesting, too. Right, another a, a person who debuted. Remember seeing her at, at Iowa State. But a lot of these people, they have this long distance talent, this road talent that you never see in college because the farthest they run for a race is six point two miles, and then they do a little bit of training, run some races, and hey, I'm pretty good at twenty six point two as well. Yeah, very impressive for her. It's always good seeing like a new a newcomer come in and run something fast in their first race because you like get you excited for incoming new depth to the u.s women's field because u.s women we would say is very deep right you could go like 10 deep of names and you're like hey, i can see that but when you look at the 10 names there's a bunch of people who kind of have yet to really fulfill like what we thought they would be at the marathon like a molly huddle you're like ah oh, like we're not, you're not seeing the, the, the best of Molly Huddle we thought we would get. Obviously, Jordan's kind of falling off. But you have, like, these other women who are either dealing with injuries. They're kind of on the end part of their careers. So every time you can find a new name, a new body to put in there, another sub-228 runner, in this case, a 226 yeah. runner in Frisbee, it gets you excited for the next four years of U.S. women's battling, you know. And, I mean, it only took two years not even like less than two years for Molly Seidel to like emerge as the ultimate top dog. Yeah. So uh, what, what Ann Frisbee does in 2023 could be incredible. 
Yeah. Molly, though, knew her in high school, knew her in college, had all these big time performances, it wasn't without challenges and struggles along the way, obviously, which have been well documented. But like Frisbee, I, I almost felt the same way I did with Lagat, where it's just like, or Cheptu, excuse me, where I, I was like, wait, where? Like, where did this, where did this come from? I know the ages are different too, but I just did, did not see that perform type of performance coming. So yeah, exciting things because the U.S. women already have a lot of star power in the marathon with people like Sisson, right? With, with people like, you know, Sally Kipiego who, who struggled in this race, but obviously made the Olympic team. Alphine Tuliamuk, Des Linden is still running. Like there's a lot of names still there uh, who are, who are veterans at this point. And then you're throwing in now these, these, these new women into the mix. It's creating a really, really deep pool, even deeper than I anticipated.